My name is Ricardo Ortiz, and this is my last lecture. Oh! oh! Chapter 1. I have always preferred to be outdoors and be doing something rather than learning it. It would be ideal for me if school was taught outdoors and I was learning hands-on instead of inside in an enclosed classroom trying not to fall asleep. I have always been a little too energetic and social in my classes ever since the first grade and it is these attributes that are my beautiful curse. My constant need for social human interaction has always been a blessing in my non-academic life and a curse in my school experience. Every time my parents have asked the teacher how I was doing in their class, it would always be the same answer explaining that I was a very intelligent student but that I would constantly get called on for talking. Above that, I have always been very fidgety in class and have always preferred to have my hands on something. Along with my sprightliness comes my creativity. From a young age, I have never had any difficulty handling tasks that require creativity. I originally thought I was destined to be a famous inventor who would invent many useful objects that would help with everyday tasks and, of course, make a lot of money. After realizing it was almost nearly impossible to patent an invention that the world actually wanted, I chose the next best thing, a civil engineer. Chapter 2 My grandfather met my grandmother at a very young age. They got married three years after they met and chose to have four children. They were blessed with four healthy girls. These girls were Claudia, Carla, Maya, and Tanya, my mother. My mother and her sisters were very close. I grew up listening to the humorous stories that consisted of my mom and my aunts doing mischievous and rowdy things. It never got old and it seems as if there were endless stories for my mom to tell us about her childhood. My mom would grow up to have two kids, Claudia, four kids, Carla, two kids, and Maya, two kids. These are the cousins that I created so many pleasant memories with. Our whole family used to live in an immense house until they decided they wanted to spread out across the United States. My mother moved to California, Maya traveled to Georgia, and Claudia, along with Carla, stayed in Virginia. I always like to ponder how much more I would have enjoyed life if we all still lived in the same state. I already consider my cousins to be my siblings, my aunts like my second mothers, and my uncles like my second fathers, so I truly wonder how much closer I would have been with the family that I am so far away from. This family was the only thing in life that I thought nobody could take away from me. Chapter 7 Finding the perfect balance between school and social life is the key to most enjoying your time in high school. It would not be worth it to spend all of high school Two staying guys, up one late, scooter. doing homework and studying only to repeat the same process again the next day. Instead, take classes that will benefit you, but at the same time will grant you some liberty to enjoy life outside of school. I jumped around friend group to friend group, finding out where I felt myself most suitable until eventually I found the perfect friends for me. If you want to have a good high school social life, you have to find the perfect friends to share fun times and make enjoyable memories with. Seek people who like you for who you truly are and who you can be comfortable around. You should share common interests with these people so that you guys have something to bond over. Whether it be sports, movies, or games, you should have something that you all enjoy doing. Numbers are something of importance in this situation. You want an abundant amount of friends to increase your popularity and seem like a more likable person. Don't limit yourself to only the people you know. It will be beneficial to you if you explore, make new friends, and establish new relationships. Your friends should only want the best for you and should be there for you when you need them, regardless of the situation. If you, like me, went to the same junior high as many of your peers, you should already have filtered out the people who you believe are the best to be around. All you have to do is hope your relationship strengthens while you are throughout high school. <laughs> Chapter 4 I find it absolutely bewildering that some people can make their way through life without ever letting anything bring them down. In my opinion, it would be ideal to live a life in which nothing can bother you and that you are always happy. No matter how hard I've tried to establish this way of living as my lifestyle, I have always come into contact with something that gets my blood boiling. I lament the fact that I don't withhold the capabilities that prevent me from becoming angry or troubled when something bad happens. Despite this complication, I am thankful for being granted someone close to me that possesses these amazing set of skills. My dad has always been the person who I have looked to when I'm feeling frustrated or sad. 
He always knows what to say and has never failed to be there for me. On countless occasions, my father has displayed his ability to always remain happy, even when something isn't going his way. I wish, above anything else, that I could mimic these set of traits, but instead, I inherited my mother's constant unhappiness. I think that my father has helped me see life the way it should be seen, through the eyes of someone who truly values it and takes advantage of every single moment, regardless as to its effect on you. My dad has shown me, time and time again, that I shouldn't let the little things have the satisfaction of getting to me. If it wasn't for my father, I would probably be an uptight and grumpy teenager. Chapter 6 The moment I realized I wanted to make a living as a civil engineer, I have been looking to travel the road that will get me to my life's goal. Since that moment, I realized that this was the only thing I truly desired. If I was able to make a career for myself as a civil engineer, everything else would just fit into place. Everything else being a love life and my way of living. Thankfully, my parents taught me from an early age that I was going to have to provide for myself when they were gone, so it would be better to start as soon as possible. When I was a child, I was made familiar to the fact that not everything was going to be within arm's reach. I had to work for what I truly wanted. Usually, when my parents told me this, I was upset and complained that this was certainly not the case for some people. They made it very clear to me that I was not some people and that if I wanted something in the future, I was going to have to earn it. I consider myself lucky to have such wise parents, for if I had not, I would have had to face the cold realization that in real life, handouts were not given. Although some might say I had harsh parents, I would say back to them that their parents weren't harsh enough on them. In some way, I can see my parents being my bosses in the future. I will have to do what they ask as to not disrespect their authority because if I did, then there would be negative consequences. In my opinion, my parents did an extraordinary job in preparing me for the future I hope to have. Even though I might have considered it unfair at the time, I see now that what they were doing is a blessing.